Beloved, after years of wandering in the wilderness, the children of Israel gathered at the edge of the land of promise, camping by the Jordan River. They would soon cross to take possession of the promised land under the leadership of Joshua. Moses wouldn't go with them, though he brought them out of Egypt and shepherded them through the long years of the wilderness. He is old and near death. Having gone that far with them, Moses deemed it necessary to deliver to his people a farewell address which he reviews their history, repeats the Ten Commandments, lays further instructions, and exhorts them to obey the Lord as they finally cross the Jordan to their new homeland. He crystallizes the choice that is before them in the words of our theme, chose life and love, found in Deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 15 to 20. And I read, See, I have said before you today life and good, death and evil. If they obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall love and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away and you will not hear but are drowned away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have said before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore choose life and that you and your offspring may love, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him for he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. In the words of the Lord, choose life and love, is a decision that must be made over and over again by all of us. When we serve the Lord and love, or will we turn away from him and die? This decision is before us to make every day, though not every day is equally momentous, and not every decision determines our destiny, but some do. Some choices we make are so definite that they set our direction for an eternal life. What does Jesus really demand from the world or from us? As Christians, we are worried about the future of our nation and how God's kingdom comes among us, how his will is done in our midst as it is in heaven. That sounds reasonable. With the 2023 elections coming, most of us have gone far approaching various candidates and political parties by asking what their qualifications for the offices they seek are. I want to suggest that we begin to ask for the things that disqualify candidates and political parties from leadership and from offices. Should we choose a political party that has perpetuated corruption, recorded the highest disrespect to the rule of law in the guise of immunity, 
Should we choose the party that has misplaced priority in government spending such that the economy of our nation is completely battered to nothing? Should we choose people of no sensitivity to the plight of the masses? No sensitivity to the people of other faith and belief in a secular state? Should we choose people who feel that leadership means power to amass wealth at the expense of the welfare of the generality of the society? We should choose to serve the Lord and God. We should choose to serve the soul of our nation. Our nation has a right to expect fair communities to provide vision, vitality, meaning, purpose, responsibility towards each other, respect and care for our environment, as well as accountability and trust in God, who is the creator of all of us. Lukewarmness on the part of Christians will not be able to address the demands of the troubling times of polarization, destabilization, and lightning speed change in economy and security. Now, than never, we need deeply rooted faith in Jesus Christ our Savior, family health conviction, and conscientious and courageous discipleship among the adherent of our faith. We are called to help save the souls of our nation. Do we have the strength of character and moral and spiritual influence to tilt our nation towards justice, peace, compassion, and ecological responsibility? God has set before us life and prosperity, death and adversity, blessings and curses. The benefits and the delights of the arrangement would not be expected apart from obedience to God's mandates. The Lord reminds us through the address of Moses that there will be dire consequences if our hearts are torn away from God and are led to bow and save other gods. The urgency of God's message to us is due to the fact that we are facing serious changes in our living conditions. We are to be known as people with deeply committed hearts. A distinction not based on the perfection of our achievements, but due to the depth of our longing to be faithful servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. Committed hearts are happy and faithful. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. A believer's heart is not consumed by guilt. It is faithful in the ways of God, diligent in the di disciplines of righteousness, free from condemnation, attentive to the ways of God, full of praise and earnestly pleading not to be forsaken by God. As God's people, we are not too far gone. We can always rechoose life and receive the blessing of God. Sure, but what is the nature of this blessing? And how exactly do we receive it? We already have it. God is our life and length of days. Obeying God and his precepts is the blessing of life that we receive in his ministry. Jesus interpreted our healthy living justly and lovingly in our communities. That community Jesus opened up to the entire world for togetherness, love, shared resources, compassion, recreation, and charity. We will choose to do good, not because Jesus says we should do good, but because goodness is God's blessing for the world, you and me. 
let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us back to life and blessing us when we love our neighbors and enemies because the world like this would be the utmost blessing from you and promise that one day you would make it be like that. May we all choose life today and tomorrow and forever. It is to you.